Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Voc Talk Cafe by Après Cours. This is a place where we chat about teaching a trade in today's world. And today we have, uh, we're, deal we're going to be dealing with the healthcare sector. And we have a special guest today, Barbara Flowers, who's going to talk to us about her project. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Okay, so just before we get into it, just so you know, on the website for the Après Cours, there's a lot of really great information. There's all the recordings, like this one you're listening to now, as well as the collaborative document where we put our meeting's agenda, the minutes of the meeting, the summary, archives from previous years. There's also the tutorial on how to add the community meeting schedule to your calendar so you can see the meetings coming up, as well as the library of shared resources and uh, the document to record your attendance. So all that is on Les Après Cours Formation Professionnelle VT website. So today, we are, we are Voc Talk Cafe is with the healthcare sector, and we're going to talk about Indigenous cultural safety in our healthcare programs. So today we have our hosts, so myself, Robin Long, and Mark Vizna, and we have a guest today. We have Barbara Flowers, who's our very first invited guest to the Voc Talk Cafe by Après Cours. So welcome, Barbara. Thank you, Robin. Good to be so, here. <laughs> a word. This is a pilot project. Your implication and suggestions are very important to create a space for you. So speak up. Everything you have to say is worth listening to. Any suggestions you want to write, go ahead and write them in the documents. You have access to it. This is your space. And this is a space where we all come together and we talk about teaching a trade. So today's goals. We would like to introduce Barbara's pro the project that Barbara worked on called Building Bridges, Indigenous Culture Safety and Healthcare Programs, which is a fantastic fantastic project and a fantastic she's created an amazing resource for for teachers i'm just kind of jealous it's only in the healthcare programs but i've already talked to barbara and i we have a plan on how to create this for every single vocational training program across the planet so don't worry <laughs> after we we've we've uh we've discovered this project a little bit we're going to discuss how this resource can be integrated into our teaching and we're going to share some of the good practices that have come with it the session breakdown. So we have this first 15 minutes, which is the presentation of the theme top, topic. And Barbara's going to go ahead and take over in a, in, in a few minutes. And there's also, a, uh, uh, in within this, we're going to talk about the technology and teaching. But this is probably going to go into the second part. That's actually left over from the, from the first time we did this. The second, and this, is, this 15 minutes is recorded and it is shared. The second half of the second three quarters of this presentation is, is a 45 minute interactive participatory discussion about the topic and about other topics of interest for you. It's yours, it's open mic. This is not recorded, although we do take notes and take away key summaries and key takeaways, but it is anonymous. So as far as the session information is, if you want to talk, we're a small group, just unmute yourself to talk. Uh, if you have any tech difficulties, log out and log back in. And all the resources that we're gonna talk about are shared at the end of this presentation, as well as on the Après Cours website, and then the Proceed websites as well. So before we get started, do we have any questions? Ready to go? All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Barbara, go ahead. Thank you again, Robin, for, for inviting me today. Um, it's really great to be here. One of the, uh, the uh, early pilots of Après Cours, uh, Voc Talk. And um, also thank you, Richard and Mark, for, for being here with us today. So um, before I go any further, I would just like to acknowledge that the land in which um, I'm reaching you today from is Mi'kma'ki. And it is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, this territory um, is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship that was um, built by the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet people when they first signed with the British crown in 1725. And I always like to remind participants that we are all treaty people. And so um, with that, I'm going to share my, my um, PowerPoint with you. So welcome um, to uh, a webinar 
uh, on Indigenous cultural safety and healthcare programs. It's the resource that was created for instructors that we're going to be talking about today, not the entire project, but just the resource. And if you've already um, joined us uh, last week for one of the webinars um, that, that we held through Proceed, um, you will notice that this is the same webinar. So there is, there is that repeat. So um, we'll just get started. So why, why this webinar? We are talking um, about the introduction of this instructor resource um, that is up on the Proceed website. And I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get into it and how to find it. But it's mainly an introduction. Um, the actual resource is about five hours in length of, of content and learning experiences. So we won't be going through the whole thing today. It's merely an introduction. But it's important to think about why, why this re resource was created. And it has a lot to do with why this project came to be. And this project um, has been ongoing for the last almost two years and included learning days and consultations with center directors, healthcare instructors, our indigenous partners who in fact are healthcare practitioners as well. And it was created, as was the project, to, and this is according to the Quebec Bien report, um, in part, these are quotes that come directly from, from the report, where it was found that it's clear that there is prejudice towards Indigenous peoples, and it is widespread among caregivers and patients. Now, of course, it's not every single um, interaction and but it's, it, it, what was found to be clear is that it does exist and that the prejudices and discriminatory practices, although they may be unconscious and sometimes not, not directed intentionally, um, it can have pretty dire consequences ranging from, for example, removing a child at birth to delayed diagnoses, um, the refusal refusal of medical evacuation, um, especially from the north, um, not prescribing exams or tests as needed, and even not prescribing the proper medication. So the aim of the project and this resource is in response to the Quebec PM report, but also the recommendations by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action to ensure a culturally safe environment for Indigenous peoples and helping and equipping these future healthcare graduates with some tools and resources to make a more inclusive environment and to welcome the diversity. And so whenever I, I, I do talk about the aims of the project or the aims of the resources, I'm very quick to, to add that um, we're all on a different part of the learning spectrum. We're all in a different place. This, this particular resource, this webinar, this project is just a beginning. It's not a box that is checked. And then at the end you think, well, is, that's it. I've done the training, I'm good to go. Um, it, it's, it's a beginning, it's a conversation. It's a way in to start the conversation and the learning. So the resource. What it is, it's a collection of learning experiences for the students in the healthcare programs. For instructors, it means going through the experiences um, yourself to begin with, and then use that, these, these actual, this actual um, resource right in your classrooms. They're ready to use presentations or PowerPoints. There's lots of video and audio links with discussion, questions, possible answers and then a whole lot of further learning resources. So what's in it? Um, there are three main parts. In part one, there are three PowerPoint presentations that are built in with reflective group and individual questions. And they take about half an hour to an hour, depending on how much time you have available and also um, where the discussions go with your groups. The, the broad areas that these PowerPoints or presentations cover are um, a look at colonization, 
a look at racism and unconscious bias, really, and also traditional healing practices. The second part, there are, again, three, three subheadings or three subparts to this. And these are in the form of stories. And the stories um, are shorter than the first part. And they can be uh, inserted um, anywhere, uh, well, anywhere that works for you. But we do have some, some um, suggestions and which competencies where they'll work best. And they, they're about a 30 minute activity um, that will go in um, helping relationships, drug therapy, medications, and palliative care. And the third part is the final activity, which is the culminating part where we, we ask you know, some evaluation questions about what was learned. Um, nothing to be marked, nothing like that. It's merely for discussion purposes and what people felt for them. So how do I use it? Um, the resource is meant to, to be woven into your programs. There are suggested competencies, but it's not a hard and fast rule or suggestion. Again, they're merely suggestions. So whatever works for you, um, you the time that you devote to it, again, is up to you. And, um, and the links, for example, they can be used how you see fit. But if you're not sure about it or you feel uncomfortable in any way, if this is new for you to teach, as it is for many of us, um, you can use it as it's, as it's uh, set out and, and it's, it's um, ready to go. You, you even have discussion questions and possible answers there that you may get from students. So where do you find it? It's, it will be posted on this um, in uh, Robin in the discussion uh, at the end, but you will, can also find it on the Proceed webpage under VOC resources. So let's now take a closer look at the resource. This is the instructor's guide. When you see this bridge, you'll see that's the beginning. Um, you'll see the territorial acknowledgement of all nine school boards that are under the Proceed banner. There's the gratitude to the committee that worked on this document with me from various school boards, again, under Proceed, and the three Indigenous healthcare partners who um, guided this process every step of the way. And it was validated by them. And we owe a tremendous amount of, of gratitude to them for working alongside us in this creation. So when you come to the table of contents, you can click any of these links and it'll take you directly to, to that section of, of the guide. Again, here's the intro to the three parts. There's a sensitivity caution, which I urge you to consider who you have in your classrooms because not all Indigenous students, for example, self-identify. So remember just to observe and to check in with your students and see how everyone's doing. And if, if you notice that um, there's some uncomfortableness, whether indigenous or not, this is, this is um, difficult material to get to, get through for many. Um, and so support, um, if you need support, um, use your professional discretion, but just be advised that this can be troubling material. So when you get to the first section on um, roots, racism, and respect, the roots, um, for example, the colonization section has a description and it's very short and some suggested competencies where this would possibly work, how long it would take. And right there is the link to the presentation. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And I won't um, show you all of the presentations, but we'll use this as an example. So you'll see that it starts with some questions that you can in here in this particular presentation, it's in green. There is uh, some definitions and quotes and some information um, about the impact of colonization, some short information on treaties and claims and I think I'm, I'm just going to insert here that um, this is really a follow up to the online course um, that 
you do have access to for the next year, the online course through Four Seasons Reconciliation Education. Um, and also, uh, and, and so that's why this is quite short because you had that information already. And ideally, if you had the opportunity with your students to go through the course and, and I'm available to talk about how to, how to do that if you're, if you're not sure. Um, residential schools, Indian hospitals, and here's our first link. Uh, and then some questions and it even tells you how long, maybe take a moment to reflect, small groups, report back to the larger group, and then some general wrapping up of, um, of, the, of that section. And again, that will take, we're estimating between maybe this one, 45 and 60 minutes. So then we go on to, this is the PowerPoint all about racism and unconscious bias. Um, and there's lots of links in this one, audio and video. Uh, respect is about the traditional healing practices. Again, you have suggested competencies, the description. It's really, and what we strive for was this would be so easy to use. So you would feel comfortable and if you are comfortable and, and you feel that you can go further, well, that's, that's entirely up to you. And there are suggestions um, in further resources at the end of this. So the second, uh, the second part, here's, here are some suggestions about how to weave these um, stories into your competencies, how to introduce the clips, some discussion questions, possible answers, how long the video clip is, and the discussion and there's the link to Joyce's story. So I'm just going to scroll down kind of quickly and you can see in red where the questions are that you can just go ahead and ask your students or not. I mean again it's up to you. This is a flexible resource. Here's the section on palliative care. Here's the final section where we ask um, you know just what is um, what is this meant um, how, did, how, what kind of impact did students have, feel they had this had on their learning? What would they like to know more about? And so on. Um, the final two sections are the ideas for further learning. Um, we do, I, I put this one at, right at the beginning. Um, if at all possible, if it's possible, always um, try and get first voice or an indigenous community member or knowledge holder, an elder, whoever, um, you might be able to get in with the help of your center administrator or me if I can help. Um, I, I will certainly work with you towards that to come in if you have a competency that you really would like someone to come in to talk about birth, for example, um, and uh, or death. The, the, the palliative care unit is a particularly um, interesting one to have someone from community come in and talk about. Also, if you have someone coming in um, it's important to know about um, community protocols. And I've included a link to Concordia University's recommendations about how you invite someone into your class. How do you introduce them? Um, what, what kind of idea for an honorarium? And you would, obviously you would work with your, your administrator or your pedagogical consultant about these, these, um, these information bits. Here's some information about how to make a meaningful um, territorial acknowledgement. These, these resources are fabulous. How to be an ally, the decolonial toolbox. Um, and then the digital stories of caregivers. If, if you were able to join us last September for the Learning Day in Montreal, and um, you heard Candida Rice speak about um, the digital stories that were um, created along um, with the University of Ottawa, these are the rest of the stories. They're fabulous. And again, these are resources. It's a bit of an annotated bibliography of um, resources that I use, that we used in the creation of, of this resource. So, so that's it. Um, that's the resource. <laughs> and that was really short. So, um, Robin, I will. Okay. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much. Like, I, the resource is so clear and it's so well structured that like it, 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 it'll be a joy for people to use. Um, 
I do have a question about the resource as a teacher. Let's say I'm now I'm not a healthcare teacher, but you know, as a teacher, you recognize structure of learning. And I wouldn't want it to know, like, how would you, if I don't really know anything about this, I'm a neophyte and here I am a teacher going, okay, I want to bring this into my class and I want to do this with my students. It's going to be a journey for everybody. Where would I start? Can this be linear? Should this be something that's more organic? Should I turn it over to the students and ask them to suggest? How do I start? If I'm a neophyte, if I have a bit of experience, if I'm well versed, how like what what would be your suggestion? Well, uh, first of all, I'd have to say what a wonderful attitude you have <laughs> for wanting to do it, even though you feel really <laughs> so that's fantastic. Um, I would say the first step I would suggest is get together with some other instructors in your program and have a conversation about it because there could be someone in your group who has a little bit more um, uh, experience or, or, um, or even maybe they don't and that's fine. And you can come together and say, okay, so how do we wanna work with this? Because you know, presumably you'll be sharing and taking bits and pieces um, depending on which competencies you're, you're teaching. So maybe come out, maybe even do the course together, like sit together, uh, maybe do some of it together that, and come up with your own questions. Does it have to be linear? Well, um, I would say start where you're comfortable. Start, start where, where it's comfortable for you. If you're not comfortable um, diving into the section on colonization and your students have already done the, the online course with Four Seasons Reconciliation, um, and you want to go ahead and just talk about um, help the helping relationships and the stories, then by all means, if that's your comfort level, then go there. Um, the only part of this that needs to be linear, I would say, um, it was meant to be more or less like a progression. So the first part with those three PowerPoint presentations were, was basic information about, you know, am I a racist? It was, what am I doing? Um, is it? Is it, do I have a bias? You know, um, they're, they're more general um, and the traditional healing practices that those discussions are very general, but I guess they could be inserted anywhere. Um, the second part with those three stories, you know, they really relate it to specific competencies. Like the, you know, the one, especially the palliative care um, would be in palliative care, right? So if you're starting right there, then bring in palliative care and see where that takes you, those conversations. But the third part, the evaluative part really needs to go at the end, you know, so close, maybe it's a conversation when they're on stage and you're having a, you know, a group talk. So you can say, well, we've done some work and we've, we've done some learning. We've had some experiences. Where are we? So, um, Although this project was sanctioned by the directors general of all nine school boards, and they they've um, they really want this as part of um, your your um, your teaching, I say go start where you're comfortable and talk to your colleagues. And if if I can help in any way, that's what I'm here for. So um, please reach out to me, and I'll put my uh, contact information in in the chat. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so it, so for, if I can just paraphrase, like it really, it's designed to be linear, it flows nicely, but you really have to start where you're comfortable as a person, as a group, in what you're teaching, so it can be taken out and, and used more like a puzzle piece uh, uh, as the instructor sees fit. You can. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. what about the resources? Because when you were going through the resources, there's like a ton of great stuff. And it was interesting because one of the questions I had was, I don't know how to write a land acknowledgement. How should I write a land acknowledgement? Should I be writing a land acknowledgement? <laughs> Do I just copy paste one from somewhere? I don't know. And then, so then you share that resource. So then I got to that. Then my question is, well, how would a teacher incorporate some of those resources? Would that be something they turn over to the students and allow them to self-appropriate those resources? Should they be including them somehow in, 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 in a safe manner? What would you suggest about the resources? Um, that's a really good question. Um, those those um, further learning experiences, I think at this point they were meant to be 
for students to, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, instructors to, if they felt there was an interest in the group, you know, if they'd say, if students would say, well, I hear people doing land acknowledgements, what's that about? And should I be doing this if I'm speaking somewhere? Or um, or what, what does it mean to be an ally? What is it? I hear that word, you know, I'm, I'm a settler ally. I'm a colonial background settler ally. What does that mean? And so, yeah, I mean, these resources can be, can be um, used by the students for sure. The links can be, be copied and sent, you know, to the students or the teacher can um, use them as the basis for some discussion. I mean, there's so many ways they can be used, but that's a really great question. And as I'm, as I'm talking, I'm thinking, um, Robin, that might be a great idea to do another Bok Talk Cafe on what do we do with the resources? Because mm -hmm. I like, to be honest, I'm, I, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm drifting away from, from, from your, uh, the work that you've done, but that, you know, you started with a land acknowledgement. And, and yes. if I'm, if I'm quite honest, like, I don't have a land acknowledgement on my email signature. And when I give presentations and workshops, I don't do that. And I've always felt a little bit awkward because it's like, well, sh would it be good that I do that? Would that help? But I feel self-conscious doing it because I'm not an indigenous person. So it's kind of a little bit the head in the sand. And so I look at that resource and I say to myself, okay, well, I'm going to go look at that resources and I'm going to try and figure out for, for the situation that I'm in. But if I were back teaching professional cooking, would that be something I would do with my students at the beginning? Would it be something once I get to know them? Like, I don't know. It kind of like, yeah, it's a great my head. question. That is a great question. And, and uh, admittedly, I work in Indigenous perspectives. And so, um, and so it would seem fitting. But actually, I think we should all um, understand that it, it is a recognition that, that we are on territory that is does not did not belong to us. And, and this territory that we are working on that we're living on, it's just a, it's just an acknowledgement to say, I know, like, I, I, I'm, I'm saying, we're, we're part of this, we're all part of this. And you might feel uncomfortable the first few times, because it's something new. But you don't, you, you don't have to be Indigenous. And, and in fact, it's probably more powerful. Um, coming from an ally perspective to say, I acknowledge that we're, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're on this traditional, we're, we're working it, this traditional it, land. It makes me think too, by starting like that, does it put us in a position, us as in the teacher and student relationship, does it put us in a position of equity, diversity, and inclusion, because I'm setting up a class. We kind of had this discussion the last, like two weeks ago when we did our, our food and tourism Vok Talk Cafe, where we were talking about uh, cultural bias in the program and, and really what came out of that. Well, it's really about developing a, a relationship between the teacher and the student, because it's about the students learning. It's not about the teacher's expertise, it's about the students learning. And so by setting up these spaces where that can happen, we're gonna have naturally inclusive practices and so I'm wondering is doing something like this does it set up this notion of safe space to learn now here we're talking about uh, cultural sensitivity uh, with indigenous healing and indigenous uh, culture in healthcare but does it open up the door to this practice of inclusion for people that have nothing to do with this but are feeling marginalized that's a big question. <laughs> That's a big question. Um, um, it could. <laughs> it could set that up. It's going to depend on how your delivery, and I think like how 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 you segue it, and or there may be some questions, or you may have a conversation. I did this because, right? It's not just in isolation. So. It, it, I think it would depend on how how you set up a conversation. Because I look at this and I think, wow, this is great. But it, it's not just about learning content. Like you said, it's not a box to check off. It's no. it's a conversation to start. And where can those conversations go? And where do we feel like we're part of conversations? Because I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels a little bit awkward because I I, I, I want to be an ally, but I don't want to be 
a phony. I don't want to, you know, you know what I mean? Like I, I, mm. I want to be a true ally and tidy. So does anybody else have any way in on, on, on the notions of the resources and incorporating them in a meaningful way into your teaching and what it can lead to? Directly, directly, no, but it kind of, it, segueing into another part, another angle about it. I wanted to ask Barbara uh, what her answer is to teachers who are focused on the content and you'll see it goes back to, to the content that they have to teach and they're saying like there's so many things i need to explain to them and to transfer there's i can't take time away from what i i use i use to do to include this kind of concern and inclusion that's a that's a wonderful question mark and the question and it's come up many times with with teachers i've spoken to and they said this is great but i don't have five hours I don't have five hours. Um, what we say is number one, do what you can with what you have where you are, you know, like just do what you can. But the the resources weren't devised to be used like as a big chunk. Like you can say, oh, I can use this here so I can weave it into a conversation about palliative care because that conversation could very likely extend to other cultures. Um, there's other cultures that you'll find in your classrooms and, and patients or clients who are other cultures. So um, it, it can be part of that whole conversation. And you'll see that um, a lot of the suggested competencies go in the beginning in helping relationships and the profession, um, because in those competencies, there's less, less content for them to cover. So once you get into the real, like, this is how you give in an injection and this is how, like, that's clinical stuff and, and it's heavy. Like, a lot of that stuff is really heavy. That's why we're seeing the, the bulk, like, the, the part one is, is the heaviest, right? That's the, uh, has the most content. That's why we say near the beginning if, if instructors can put it in there where there's less that they're going to be sort of tested on. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your completely? Question? Yes. Okay. But I, what I'm hearing is that you're. What I'm hearing is that you're saying that it needs to become part of the culture of the healthcare, and that it needs to be part of the context given to any of the practices, techniques, and stuff that that are taught in yes. the in the. Okay. And it's already in it's already in the programs about diverse cultures and equity. It is. <laughs> There's if you go through, um, I'm talking, thinking about the two main programs, not the pharmacy program right now, because I, I'm, I'm not as familiar with it, but you'll see when you go through um, the program of study that there's there's questions, well, you know, uh, you have somebody from a different culture or um, again, I don't know why I'm thinking palliative care again, but um, what do we need to remember when someone passes? Like there are different rites of passage in different cultures. So it could just be part of that conversation. I understand. That's an interesting one because I had on a, on a, I did a side project that I was never able to get to fruition. So if any healthcare teacher wants to work on this project with me, I would love it. And it was um, uh, uh, cultural food sources, for, uh, developing recipes of, of cultural significance uh, for palliative care patients. Because we know that food is, is incredibly important for mental health and for our, and for our well-being the, our soul and we we talk through food and if you have peoples not just immigrants this is this notion that we don't all have the same eating habits and if you have somebody in palliative care food isn't just sustenance it's not just calories to be consumed there's going to be a fundamental connection inside of you so if you grew up with a certain type of food and in this case so let's if we're talking about our indigenous uh, the indigenous uh, peoples of uh, here, like if you grew up on country food, then how do you bring that notion into foodstuffs and create recipes that can be used in palliative care that go after the flavor profiles, the textures, the the the, the connotation of that? So I have I have for any healthcare worker out there, I have a whole <laughs> website developed with all that. It's in French because I had to develop it in French, but you know. 
Yeah. It, it, it's there, but it makes me think of that. You know, it's, sure. it's it seems Absolutely. like palliative care, it really is a window into, because it's about the, it's about what we associate as a society around death and the social side of death, how we accompany somebody on that journey. And, you know, to be quite frank, I find in Western society, we're pretty terrible at it, but I'm not a healthcare worker. So healthcare workers, if I'm wrong, call me out. I want to hear you on vt.proceed.ca. Call me out on that. Yeah. But it always feels like we're, we're not that great about that. And so what about yeah. other cultures? And, and yeah. let's, let's, let's hear it. So, but it seems like a natural place for it. So I understand that, that it seems to always come Absolutely. up. And, you know, in um, indigenous cultures, many, they'll, they'll, they'll bring in their own food. So just knowing, like knowing that they're going to bring their own food in, like just say, how can I support you? How can I support the family? Like, can I, and they often will set an extra plate for um, the ancestors who've gone before. And so recognizing, recognizing those, um, those um, cultural practices, but um, what you'll see throughout the, the resource is always this reminder to ask and really listen, really listen and listen to what's not being said because many indigenous clients have an experience, a negative experience with healthcare, and they'll just not say anything. But to ask and not jump in and talk and say, oh, well, you know, okay, well, that's fine, okay, whatever. Or, but to ask and allow some silence and listen to what's being said and then support them and say, is there anything else that I can do to support you in your, in your care? What else can I do for you? And it comes down to something as basic as that. And that kind of permeates all the way through the resource. And that is what we do, you know, in the programs anyway, in healthcare is, is, is to advocate. Um, we, we need to advocate for the, the patient, but we need to listen when, when they, when they have, have something to say, either verbally or non-verbally or family, what family says. All right. Those are my questions. Does anybody else have any other questions for Barbara? Actually, I do. Good. Uh, you talked about the webinars and the recordings that will be published soon. Are mm -hmm. you planning to like uh, have the webinars again? Because the webinar yeah. is way more interesting when you participate in it live oh, and, and, and watching the recording. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, I'm looking at a plan for the fall um, about how to best support um, teachers. Um, I would rather, I would like to do uh, something a little bit more meaty, like, well, okay, let's go into this section or, you know, and, and do it as per the request of centers. Like they might say, hey, can you, can you go through this racism PowerPoint? Like this is a hard one to talk about. Can we go through this? So I think I that's kind of the way I'm thinking now, Mark, but it, it may change by through the summer when I decide it, uh, it, it's, you know, most makes most sense, but I'm ho hoping to hear from instructors to tell me what they want and, and I'll respond to that. But um, I'm thinking of a little bit of a different format. The webinars are great. These types, this Vodka Cafe thing is great. In person is great. Like it's all, it's all about diversification and diversity of, 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 of presentation. Mark brought it up in the last um, webinar that we had or the last Vodka Cafe that we had that the science proves it. The more you can diversify the means in which people can learn, the better they learn. And mm -hmm. this is about a learning journey. It's about a learning journey for everyone. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And just as an aside, I mean, this, this resource, um, I had a conversation with Jean Bouchard, and this is something that could be a, an online course, like it really lends itself to teachers doing it as a course, you know, so, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe students as a course, you know, like it could be whatever. So there's various ways, yeah, diversify and do, do it, come at it from all different angles, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
so Barbara, thank you so much for, for presenting that resource to us. It is fantastic. And I really look forward to continuing, continuing this discussion. Um, for we, we, I definitely think we'll have opportunities to do other digital collaborations, in-person workshops, uh, and I encourage everyone to continue this discussion on vt.proceed.ca. Go ahead and log into your trade group. You can see the information in the healthcare in the healthcare trades, and, and, and let's continue this discussion. Tell us how you are in how it's going when you incorporate this. Tell us about it's it's hard when it doesn't go well. So let's start with our successes. Let's start with what we feel good about. But let's continue this discussion. Um, and from this, the next Voc Talk Cafe. This closes up our Voc Talk Cafe for this summer. Uh, we're now on break. Our next Voc Talk Cafe will be this coming fall. The resources, so the resources are shared through the presentation as well as on the Apnicole website on proceed.ca under projects and in vt.proceed.ca. Of course, you can always reach out to any of us to, for any questions you might have. So, so feel free to do that. And thank you very much for being part of Voc Talk Cafe.